Jordan, please be seated. All right, a motion to reconvene the open council meeting. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. I uh, want to open by apologizing for how hot it is in here. Um, if I've got the windswept look, it's because I have a fan directly behind me. Um, the uh, problem occurred in our uh, HVAC system, and they're in the process of repairing it now. It's not too bad, and we'll try to make this as quick and painless as possible. So uh, thank you again for your patience as a result of this uh, temporary difficulty. A motion to adopt the minutes of the Open Council meeting held on uh, May the 15th, 2017. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. First item of business is we have a presentation, the Environmental Awards and Environmental Stars, and uh, I'm going to come down to do the presentations along with uh, Councillor Johnson. Come on, Councillor Johnson, you're my Vanna White. Okay, I should get my notes. I should have memorized them. All right, good evening, everyone. As you probably know, Burnaby Environment Week celebrations are underway. The Environment Festival at City Hall was this past Saturday, and there are many more events happening in our city from now until June the 11th. This evening's reception and awards presentation is one of the main events of the Environment Week program. This year we also celebrate the city's new environmental sustainability strategy, which is a new plan for Burnaby's green future. Each of the award recipients this evening has helped to support the plan by taking action in the areas of environmental stewardship and sustainability. To encourage others to take action and support the plan tonight, we ask all of you to help us spread the word about the city's new My Green Pledge program. You can visit uh, www.burnaby.ca ESS to learn more about this new program. Now, on to the presentation. Since 1996, the Environmental Awards Program has recognized deserving individuals, groups, institutions, and businesses making significant contributions to our city in the area of environmental stewardship and sustainability. This evening, we are pleased to recognize the recipients for 2017. Before we begin, the city would like to acknowledge Cobanta Energy, our corporate sponsor for Environment Week and the awards reception. Cobanta's representatives were unable to attend the reception this evening and send their regrets, but nonetheless, we thank them for their support. Big hand for Cobanta. They, by the way, are the folks who operate the Metro Vancouver incinerator down by the Big Bend near the Fraser River, and they turn garbage in Burnaby into enough power to be able to power 15,000 homes, which is a good use of garbage, much better than putting it into landfills to lay there for the next thousand years. All right, now, the Environment, uh, Environmental Awards Program receives nominations in six categories. Business Stewardship, Communications, Community Stewardship, Green Choices, Planning and Development, and Youth. There are also two levels of recognition. Environmental awards typically recognize outstanding environmental achievements of a significant scope over a number of years. Environmental stars typically recognize significant environmental achievements, but of a smaller scale. Without further delay, this year, there are five environmental star recipients and four environmental award recipients. We will begin with the environmental stars. The first environmental star in the category of business stewardship is presented to Reed's Automotive Recycling for their outstanding achievements to reduce the environmental footprint of their business operations. 
In 2014, Reed's Automotive Recycling began working with a private sector consultant to measure their greenhouse gas emissions and develop strategies to reduce their environmental footprint. They have since made capital investments in their building to make it more energy efficient, resulting in less natural gas consumption. They also expanded their recycling programs and have promoted alternative commuting options for their employees. These investments and programs have significantly reduced their annual GHG emissions. I ask the owners of Reed's Automotive Recycling, Stuart Reed and Teresa Reed, to come forward and accept their environmental star. Congratulations. Wonderful job. Here you go. Come on in the middle between us. Congratulations. All right, the second environmental star in the category of communications is presented to Simon Fraser University for outstanding community engagement as part of SFU's 20-year sustainability vision and goals planning process. For their 50th anniversary, SFU's sustainability office launched a comprehensive community engagement process to map out and envision what a sustainable SFU would look like in 20 years. The result was the participation of over 4,000 SFU community members to create a 20-year sustainability vision and goals for the institution. The engagement process included an online reporting initiative to track SFU sustainability achievements, community surveys and open houses, and support for ind individuals to host small group discussions around environmental sustainability. I want to ask uh, Erica Lay, the Associate Director for Simon Fraser University's Sustainability Office, to come forward and accept the Environmental Star. Erica, please. <laughs> Congratulations, Erica. <laughs> Wonderful job. <laughs> All right, the third environmental star in the category of community stewardship is presented to Randy and Wendy Snyder for their outstanding contributions to our community as long-standing members of the Stony Creek Environment Committee. Randy and Wendy Snyder have been active with the Stony Creek Environment Committee, a local environmental stewardship group, for over 10 years. Wendy organizes and leads many invasive plants and uh, plant and pull and restoration planning activities in the watershed. She also leads a monthly bird walk and authors a blog about SCEC activities. In addition to participating in stewardship activities, Randy also helped the Stony Creek Environment Committee rebrand their promotional and outreach materials with a new logo and graphics. Their joint volunteer efforts have benefited the community of Burnaby and have contributed to the stewardship of Stony Creek. I ask uh, Randy and Wendy Schneider to come forward and accept their environmental star. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Right in the middle here. You want to hold it? There you go. Photographer will tell us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right, the fourth environmental star in the category of youth is presented to Maretta Strandberg Salmon for outstanding efforts to eliminate bottled water consumption at Mossgrop Secondary School. In the spring of 2016, Moretta began a project with a goal to eliminate the sale of bottled water at her school in order to reduce waste and greenhouse gas emissions that result from the production, distribution, and disposal of plastic water bottles. Moretta undertook many different initiatives to educate and raise awareness among her fellow students, teachers, and school district staff. 
where his efforts have resulted in bottled water being removed from the vending machines in the school. An initiative is now underway to have a new water container, filling station, and fountain installed in the building. I ask Moretta Strandberg Salmon to come forward and accept her environmental star. Congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. One for mom. Oh, one for mom, definitely. <laughs> Just doesn't trust we'll get a good picture. <laughs> All right, the fifth and last environmental star in the category of youth is presented to the Deer Lake Student Streamkeepers for their stewardship of Deer Lake Watershed. The Deer Lake Student Streamkeepers are a group of students from Burnaby Central Secondary School. In 2015, the group formed a school club to study the ecology of Deer Lake Brook and its tributaries. After some initial success, the students reached out to the City of Burnaby Stream Clippers program for guidance. Since then, the students have received training from the Pacific Streamkeeping Federation and have undertaken regular field visits to measure the water quality of Deer Lake Brook. These students have exhibited leadership and enthusiasm towards stewardship of this ecologically significant waterway. I would ask Sarah Sue and Carlo Seguiben, grade 11 students at Burnaby Central Secondary School to come forward and accept their environmental star. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Jehovah. Come on in here. Good job. <laughs> All right, now, that concludes the presentation of the environmental stars. Next are the four environmental award recipients. The first environmental award in the category of business stewardship is being presented to the Burnaby Board of Trade for their outstanding and ongo ongoing efforts to help Burnaby businesses be more environmentally sustainable. The Board of Trade's flagship environmental program is the Pledge for a Sustainable Community, which is an online resource that helps businesses reduce their environmental footprint. The Pledge program has received recognition locally and abroad. New programs from the Board of Trade include partnering with a local financial institution to create a community grant program that supports sustainability programming and business resources for its members. The board has also partnered with a locally based social enterprise to make their greenhouse gas GHG reduction certi certification process more accessible to board members. As a result of the Board of Trade's efforts, a growing number of Burnaby-based businesses have become certified and have reduced their environmental footprint. I ask Paul Holden, President and CEO, and Tessa Vanderkop, Marketing Programs and Sustainability Manager for the Burnaby Board of Trade, to come forward and accept their environmental award. Congratulations. One in here in the middle. Thank you. I'll this one. We're not paying you, Coral. <laughs> well, if you got a little bit of a slip on some words, is that I'm recovering from uh, work on my tooth this afternoon where I broke a tooth. The slip isn't working right right now. So if you see a crooked smile, that's the reason. The second uh, environmental award in the category of green choices is presented to Kimberly Wong for her outstanding efforts in her community to create a shared garden space for growing food at Kensington Gardens apartment complex. Kimberly Wong is a resident and president of the Strata Council at Kensington Gardens, an apartment complex in North Burnaby. Under Ms. Wong's leadership, the residents of this complex were able to convert an 
underused outdoor space into a community garden space. The garden gives the residents a choice to grow fresh food for their own use. Lawn clippings and leaves that would otherwise have to be hauled away as green waste are reused to help the soil. The garden now consists of many garden boxes and has helped create more social interaction among the residents. So I'd ask Kimberly Wong to come forward and accept her environmental award. Come on up, Kimberly. <laughs> Popular choice. <laughs> <laughs> Fun in here. It's not embarrassing, they love you. <laughs> Over there, he wants a picture. <laughs> oh, I'm like, who am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on down, we got time for you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, the third environmental award in the category of planning and development is presented to the British Columbia <coughs> Institute of Technology. Gosh, our educational institutions are winning all over. For outstanding contributions to environmental sustainability in the built environment as part of BCIT's Factor 4 initiative. The Factor 4 initiative is led by the School of Construction and the Environment at BCIT. The initiative uses the buildings and services of an area on the campus as a living laboratory to explore whether a 75% reduction in materials and energy use can be achieved without compromising service levels. Since the initiative began in 2009, more than 20 successful projects have been completed in areas such as renewable energy, zero waste and ecological res restoration, along with uh, case studies, research papers, and educational videos. Over that time, the initiative has engaged students, faculty, and professionals across multiple disciplines. I ask that uh, Rob Sawatsky, Brina Jackson, and Kyle Karlstad, instructors at BC BCIT, come forward to accept this environmental award. How are you doing? Congratulations. Congratulations. Great job. Come on over here. Come on in here. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you very much. Great job. All right, the fourth and final environmental award in the category of youth is presented to Sonia Khan for outstanding leadership and environmental achievements in her school and community with the Burnaby Youth Sustainability Network. Sonia Khan is a student at Ecole Alpha Secondary School and serves as the president of her school's Enviro Club and the Burnaby Youth Sustainability Network. In these roles, Ms. Kung helps lead a variety of environmental sustainability programs and initiatives for youth in Burnaby. She also founded an environmental workshop series now hosted by elementary schools throughout the Burnaby School District that aims to inspire youth to create greener communities. As president of the Burnaby Youth Sustainability Network, Ms. Kung organized a summer clothing swap to reduce textile waste and helped organize the recently completed do It Green Youth Conference. I ask Sonia Kung to come forward and accept her environmental award. Sonia, come on up. Congratulations, Sonia. Oh, he was much better. <laughs> wow. So this concludes the Environmental Awards and STARS presentation for 2017. I want to thank you, uh, thank you again uh, for all of this year's recipients and your contributions to our community and our environment. As a reminder, Environment Week events and activities are scheduled right through to June 11th. 
So please visit our webpage at burnaby.ca Environment Week to learn more about upcoming events and activities. And as I said before, it's www.burnaby.ca slash ESS to learn more about the My Green Pledge program. Fantastic. So I, uh, I wanted also to uh, mention, I saw in the audience we have uh, MLA-elect Ra Shohan. Welcome tonight. Thank you for coming out to help celebrate this. And I don't think I have any more erstwhile MLA. Oh, there she is, another MLA elect hiding way at the back there, Janet Rutledge, the new MLA for Burnaby Deer Lake. And of course, of course, we've got uh, we've got Ann Kang, who's MLA elect for Deer Lake. Burnaby North. Oh, I'm sorry, Burnaby North. Sorry if I mixed up your riding. Uh, anyway, I appreciate, this is a good start, MLA, so I'd love to see you out at the council meetings. If you could be here every Monday so we could tell you our problems. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I want to again thank all of the recipients of these awards. You know, I, Burnaby is a great community, but it's great because there are so many people doing so many important things to make Burnaby a better place to live, learn, work, and play. And uh, it's the things that you do individually brought together that creates such a, a uh, environmentally responsible and sustainable community. In fact, you're the people that are going to make our vision of Burnaby being one of the most sustainable cities anywhere in the nation to fruition. You know, as if uh, the ESS, the Environmental Sustainability Strategy, will only work with people like you, making it a reality in our community. So again, I want to thank all of you for the great work that you do each and every day. As you saw, it goes from young people in our high schools through to our educational institutions, our business community. It is everybody working together that makes a sustainable community. So again, on behalf of Burnaby City Council, thank you to everyone for the great work you've done over the past year. You are, you are welcome to stay for the balance of the council meeting, but I know that some of you probably have places to get to. There's students who are right in the middle, I'm sure, of exams. And so I will give you one and a half minutes for anybody who desperately has to leave to clear out, and then we'll proceed with the rest of our council meeting. Yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually more articulate than that, but you know, I'm starting to stumble. <laughs> I got a new tooth, though. The shiny one. Yeah, it broke. <laughs> I'm going to turn that one off for me. <coughs> Good, thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. Proclamations. The uh, first proclamation will be done by Councillor Dollywall, please. Thank you. Proclamation, Access Awareness Day. Whereas accessibility and inclusion is essential for ensuring that all community members have equality, equity and opportunities and the ability to fully participate and community life and whereas accessibility should be part of all aspects of community life, physical, social and economic, including employment, transportation, recreation and housing. 
And whereas we all have a role to play in ensuring that our communities are all accessible and inclusive as possible. Now, therefore, the Corrigan Mayor of Burnaby does hereby proclaim June 3rd, 2017 as Access Awareness Day in the city of Burnaby. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dollywell. <clears throat> Councillor McDonnell, please. Garden Days. Whereas Garden Days is a joyous 10-day countrywide celebration of the role of gardens in our lives and communities. And in honor of National Garden Day, observed annually on the Friday before Father's Day, and whereas Garden Days will educate residents of Burnaby about the community gardens, culture, and history, the importance of the public and private gardens, the value of home gardening, the health and well being and aesthetic benefits of gardens, and the promotion of environmental stewardship. And whereas Garden Days will be an opportunity for new and seasoned gardeners, gardening enthusiasts, families, schools, and tourists alike to go out and into their own garden. Visit, visit a local garden or garden center or travel to our community to share their knowledge and passion for gardens and gardening. And whereas Garden Day will celebrate our community's garden culture and heritage and our local landscape, nursery and garden center and industry. Now, therefore, Derek, R. Derek Korg and Mayor Burnaby do hereby proclaim June 9th to the 18th as Garden Days in the city of Burnaby. Thank you, Councillor McDonnell. Councillor Balco. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is a proclamation from the Mayor of the City of Burnaby regarding Parachutes Safe Kids Week. Yeah, that's what I said. Whereas the theme for Parachutes Safe Kids Week 2017 is safe active transportation, and whereas preventable injuries are the number one killer of Canadians aged 11 to 44, Preventable injuries are costing the Canadian economy tens of billions of dollars and, whereas active transportation is important, it is also one of the riskiest activities for young people to engage in. Child pedestrian injuries are a leading cause of injury-related death for Canadian children aged 14 years or younger. And whereas everyone can follow simple road safety tips to keep ourselves and our children safe on the road, on, for years to come, and whereas Safe Kids Week is a week dedicated to raising awareness and seeking solutions to preventable child fatalities and serious injuries on the road across Canada. Everyone has a role to play in creating change amongst their peers, in classrooms and in their communities. Now therefore, I, Derek Corgan, Mayor of Burnaby, does hereby proclaim June the 5th to the 11th as Parachutes Safe Kids Week in the city of Burnaby. Thank you. And the final proclamation is from Councillor Kang. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this proclamation is Vancouver and Lower, Lower Mainland Multicultural Family Services Society, um, VLMFFS Day of Resilience in, and sorry, in Diversity. Whereas every year in BC, there are over 60,000 physical or sexual assaults against women. And whereas in Canada, it is estimated that every year, 800,000 children witness a woman being abused. And whereas acknowledge that immigrant refugee women and children who are victims of violence are not accessing available services, which VLMFSS has created. And whereas the vision is to recruit, hire, and empower bicultural, bilingual immigrant women who in turn empower women and children who are victims of a family violence in their communities. And whereas VLMFSS bridges the gap between the women and the available services helping them na navigate the social and legal systems and access relevant services and programs. And whereas VLM FSS believes that in addressing the barriers such as language, lack of knowledge of systematic resources will make the survivors who are victims of violence at par with other Canadians and creating an equal and just society for all. And whereas VLM FSS has assisted 43,000 women and children over the last 25 years. And whereas on June 2nd, VLMFSS will be celebrating the 25th anniversary while recognizing the resilience, strength, and diversity of women and children who have been victims of family violence. Now, therefore, Derek Corrigan, Mayor of Burnaby, do hereby proclaim June 2nd as Vancouver and Lower Mainland Multicultural Family Services Society Day of Resilience in Diversity in the city of Burnaby. Thank you, Worship. 
Thank you, Councillor Kang. Um, a motion to hear the delegation. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. The delegation is Emmy Lai, uh, Matt Harder, and Ralph McDermott. And if you would come forward, please, you have 10 minutes to make a presentation. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, Your Worship, Mayor Corrigan, and councillors. Uh, my name is Amy Lai, and this is my husband, Ralph McDermott. And here's Matt Harder. We are from 4505 Hazel Street. Right, you can proceed. So we actually uh, uh, situated right on Wellington and Grange, and our physical address is 4505 Hazel Street. Matt, would you like to do an intro? Oh, um, I just wanted to say that uh, we live across from the Sovereign, and it's a building that's a combination of hotel, condos, and several businesses in what has been called the biggest building in the entire lower mainland. The Sovereign took three and a half years to finish construction and was built between 2011 and 2014. For the last three and a half years, we've been dealing with a lights and noise issue from this building, and that's why we're here today. So during the rezoning in 2000, the rezoning number is 0548. The, um, so the Sovent is actually the middle building, and the Dynasty is the 21 stories building on the right side. So the Sovent and Element have air conditioning, and they've been built that way. And at that time, when we went to rezoning, we don't see any heating, ventilation, or air conditioning unit that will be phasing our building. So to give you a perspective of the distance between my building, the Dynasty, and 4501 Hazel Street. From what I can see, this is a street level. It's the width of the street. And from the aerial, you can see that it's the width of the street too. So it's pretty close. And during constructions, when Bosa was drilling and doing the foundation, they actually drilled into our building and created three holes into our building. That is how close the building is. So they, the heat ventilation and air conditioning unit is actually on the third floor. And the buses and trucks actually uses their main floor basement. So as we all know, noise travels up. So you can imagine all the units on the south side of our building can hear the noise. So not only do we get the noise, we also get the light pollution. So this is the northwest corner of 4501 Kingsway. This is from my living room. I see this. I have to close my blinds every night when I sleep so that I don't get the light pollution. Even then, the light still comes through. So this office is spacecraft. I'm not joking. The name is called spacecraft. It belongs to one of the BOSA kids, and it is a co-working area. That is the element, the hotel ballroom. The lights is never on unless there is a function. So that is the stairwell. The stair, the top of the stairs is all glass, and the lights is on 24-7. Not only that, there is a garden lights that shines up. It doesn't shine down, it shines up. So this is the view from Matt's floor. Matt is gonna talk about this. So this is a view from uh, my balcony of the lights from the northwest side of the address mentioned before. And so this is the view from my floor, the ninth floor from the dynasty. That's just one part of what is shining into my bedroom window every night. So, you want to go to the next? Um, in actual fact, Matt can see what's happening in that area of spacecraft. You can see from the pictures, he can virtually see everything that's happening in there. 
So those lights are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And imagine that in conjunction with all the other lights that we're seeing there. The other thing too is in 2015, when the building was completed, I actually talked to BOSA, a contractor, and asked why is the lights on 24-7? The answer that I got was that if they didn't have the lights on 24-7, they will never get occupancy permit. And at one time they had the lights off, and then they had the lights on. And when I visited that area, the spacecraft, what I noticed was there was no, they opened directly down into the stairwell. So I think that was the reason why the lights has to be on 24 seven. And I talked to the contractor, I said, what is the possibility of, you know, having the lights on only closer to the stairwell? And they said the owner may not want to spend the money to do that. So you can see the elements ballroom, the lights is not on, the garden lights is on. And this is actually from my bedroom. So right at the bottom, the trees, the maple will shade the lights from the lobby. However, in the winter, I can actually be their security guard. I can tell them what's happening in the lobby. And then this is good life fitness. The lights is on 24-7. And COP 378, the lights is on 24-7. In 2005, I went to talk to them. I said, what's the possibility of pulling down the blinds so that we don't get all your lights or even turn off your lights? Well, it's a WCB requirement that we have to have our lights on 24-7. So, and that doesn't make sense because the nonprofit group's office on the fifth floor never have their lights on at night. Why? Plus, this is the stairwell lights. This is from my floor on the fifth floor. So if you can imagine, this is from Matt's floor. Matt? So this is the northeast side of uh, looking at the Sovereign and those lights are shining into my bedroom window 24 hours, or they're on 24 seven. Plus you have the fitness center. How many lights are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different lights open or on 24 seven. You have the stairwell light on 24 seven, the Cope it building. So in, in addition, I mean, technically I'm not facing the parking a lot lights and I realize those have to be on but what the, are the building as well to the left of that all the lights are on in that building as well but we're just focusing for a presentation on the sovereign which we're, we'd like to have uh, fixed. So. One of the jokes that I would say is that if if Matt want to be a spy he can actually use a binoculars and look into the computer of those offices, he can virtually read word by word what is on the screen. So just to give you a perspective, the spacecraft second floor is actually the fifth floor. And then the stairwell lights, which is the fifth floor, is actually the ninth floor, which is where Matt is, and he gets all of it. So just to give you a perspective that there are five units on each floor. So you can imagine two thirds of the units in our building is actually facing the solvent and element. So we have the lights from spacecraft. We have the laundry machines. We have the HVACs. We have the lights from the stairs. And we also have the lights from COPE. So um, we also have people shouting, children screaming around the swimming pool. And this is the fifth floor, the swimming pool is there, and then the area where people are screaming and children screaming. And um, the lights shining up, <laughs> the HVAC and the laundry machines. And um, I also talked to Bosa about the mechanical electrical room on the higher floor. At the time it was 13, and I just counted it's 19 floor. They were able to put in a motion sensor and disable the balcony lights. So Bosa is in the process of applying for lead. So to be a lead, you have to conserve energy. I don't see this building conserving energy at all. We like to ask that staff please review the Dillman permit drawing and work with Boston and try to reduce the noise and light pollution so that it's bearable for Earth. 
um, I have given the city clerks four letters from 1105. 1306 is actually here, and 1605 and 1905. 1306, the noise is so loud that she has to use earplugs in order for her to sleep. And not only that, the dryer is blowing white fluff that ends up in her unit when she opens her window. And I'd like to say thank you for letting us present, and I hope you can help us find a solution. We like to be good neighbors, and we hope that they will be good neighbors too. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's a question from Councillor Balco. quick on this uh, I would give you a suggestion I know you've come to uh, the city and the planning department but this sounds to me like uh, one one area you might consider is Fraser Health on environmental health uh, you might get uh, another response there and I don't think the irony <laughs> is lost on me but I know the two buildings that uh, on Hazel they are uh, some very highly recognized early Boza projects from way back when if I'm not mistaken so I'm surprised that they uh, wouldn't uh, perhaps be a little more forthcoming in assisting you in this issue. So maybe you can We've had stress that yeah, point. We've had three and a half years of dealing with BOSA, with our Stratico management company, with the businesses that are concerned with the lights and nothing has been done, zero. We had the air conditioning unit lowered, the noise level lowered, but they measured it from my floor, the ninth floor, and Darcy from, what's her department? From, Darcy from engineering. From engineering department, she said it's actually over the acceptable level, but we're not going to do anything about it. So this is why we're here today out of desperation. We need something done. So. Thank you. And uh, the staff can respond by way of letter. I think staff has a bit different perspective on this than you do, that uh, there has been considerable work done to respond to your complaints and considerable effort on behalf of the owner of the building to be able to deal with some of the issues that concern you. But that being said is that I think it's fair for you to get a written response from our staff in regard to what exactly has been accomplished. And, uh, and I think we should clarify as to whether or not this business complies with the noise bylaw in relation to the HVAC system. I would be very surprised if one of our engineers was saying that it was out of compliance and that nothing would be done about it. Um, I'll ask our engineer to respond in writing in regard to that allegation. But I can tell you that uh, in my experience, staff responds in all instances where there's a violation of our bylaw, it may be that the recording of the noise at the property line where they are permitted to record it is within the bylaw. And it may very well be that noise that goes above the building may not be able to be reacted to, but our staff will respond to that. I, uh, I think of irony a little bit in a, in a different way is that I still remember when across the street from you was the Astor Hotel parking lot and a trailer park and uh, you would have had a real adventure with both of those. If you're complaining about good life fitness and spacecraft, you can imagine having the, the Astor Hotel parking lot and a massive trailer park that will probably had more police cars attending it than any other site in Burnaby. So the world changes over a considerable period of time and you in your homes were part of that change. You were uh, quite different from the areas around there. In fact, residential homes were taken down to be able to, to build the buildings that you are in now. Um, urban environments require compromises and uh, I think all of us try to achieve those compromises. We will continue to ensure that uh, our laws are complied with, but I think good neighbor policies help everybody and uh, I'll do my best to talk to the Bozas about ensuring that they're making every effort and I think probably some of these other issues you're going to need to deal with the strata council that operates the strata at the uh, element project. So uh, that may be an area where good neighbors need to talk to each other about what the impact of their individual developments are. But I, uh, I think council always takes seriously complaints that are made by our residents. And I think it's important that councillors get a history of what has been three and a half years 
of attempts to deal with some of the issues that concern you and to look at, at whether or not there are any other resolutions that haven't been tried. Thank you very much though for being with us tonight and we do appreciate you bringing these issues to our attention. Thank you, Your Worship and Councillors. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye -bye. I just like uh, Thank you. All right, then moving on to the uh, next. It's a motion to resolve into a committee of the whole to consider reports. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. The uh, first report, item A, is from the city clerk, certificate of sufficiency in regard to resident initiative uh, local improvements been moved and seconded any discussion all those in favor opposed carry item b is financial management committee councillor johnson this is regarding festival burnaby grant program applications i would uh, move regarding 17-n-0006 cultural chats bc association that a festival burnaby grant in the amount of one thousand dollars be awarded to Culture Chats BC Association for the Intercultural Community Reading Festival to be held on 2017, September 21 to 23rd at Tommy Douglas Library. Okay. Question. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carry. Uh, next item, Your Worship, regarding the North Burnaby Community Association, I would move that a festival's Burnaby neighborhood event grant in the amount of $1,000 be awarded to the North Burnaby Community Association for the North. Burnaby North Community Fair to be held on 2017, July 22nd at 740 Hammersfield Road. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, next, Your Worship, regarding Permai BC Association, I would move that a festival's Burnaby Grant small scale event in the amount of $2,500 be awarded to the Permai BC Association for the festival's Allen Allen 2017 to be held on 2017 October 14th at the Nikai National Museum and Cultural Center. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Next one, you got your worship regarding the Eurofest BC Society that a festival's Burnaby Grant large scale event in the amount of 25,000 be awarded to Eurofest BC Society for European Festival to be held on 2018, May 26, 27 at Swan Guard Stadium. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Next, Your Worship, regarding the Korean Cultural Heritage Society, I would move that a festival's Burnaby Grant large-scale event in the amount of $20,000 be awarded to Korean Cultural Heritage Society for the 16th Annual Korean Cultural Festival to be held on 2017, August 5th at Swangard Stadium. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you. The next report, next, item 6.C. Next is regarding uh, grant normal grant applications. I would move that uh, an in-kind grant of $1,000 be awarded to the Burnaby Arts Council for printing signage of the third annual Summer Arts Festival and the second annual Parks Edge Paint-Off. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Regarding Burnaby Family Life, I would move that a grant of $17,000 be awarded to the Burnaby Family Life in support of services provided by the organization in 2017. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Regarding South Burnaby Metro Club under 18 strikers, I would move that a grant of $1,000 be awarded to the South Burnaby Metro Club U18 strikers soccer team for travel expenses for 18 players to participate at the provincial Soccer championship to be held 2017, July 6th to 9th in Vernon, BC. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, regarding North Burnaby Community Association, I would move that the grant request be denied. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Regarding Odyssey of the Mind, I would move that a grant in the amount of $1,000 be awarded to Buckingham Elementary School for travel expenses for Team Odyssey to the Mind members who participate at the World Finals, May 24th to 27, 2017 in Michigan. I would move that a grant of $1,000 be awarded to Montecito Sec 
Elementary School for travel expenses for the Team Odyssey for the MIND members to participate at the 2017 May 24th to 27th also in Michigan and that a grant for $1,000 be awarded to Park Crest Elementary School for travel expenses for Team Odyssey for the MIND members to participate at the World Finals again May 24th to 27th 2017 in Michigan. So moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. And next, Your Worship, regarding uh, Burnaby residents opposing Kinder Morgan expansion, that a grant in the amount of $350 be awarded to Burnaby residents opposing Kinder Morgan expansion broke for the Fossil Fuel Freedom Fest Celebrate Resistance Festival to be held on 2017, May 28th at Westridge Park. Second. That's a mouthful. Um, Those in favor, opposed, carried. And regarding Burnaby wheel, Meals on Wheels, I would move that a grant of $9,000 be awarded to Burnaby Meals on Wheels to provide home delivery service for nutritious meals to Burnaby residents in 2017. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Regarding Big Sisters of BC Lower Mainland, I would move that a grant of $5,000 be awarded to Big Sisters of BC Lower Mainland in support of mentoring services provided for the organization in 2017. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Westburn Soccer Club Galaxy Under 14. I would move that a grant in the amount of $1,000 awarded to the Westburn Youth Soccer Club Galaxy U14 team for travel expenses for 12 players to participate at Provincial Soccer Championships to be held July 6 to 9, 2017 in Vernon, B.C. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Volunteer Burnaby, I would move that a grant in the amount of $12,000 be awarded to Volunteer Burnaby for programs and services for the citizens of Burnaby for 2017. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Regarding South Burnaby Metro Club United FC U14, I would move that a grant in the amount of $1,000 be awarded to South Burnaby Metro Club United FC U14 team for travel expenses for 14 players to participate at the Provincial Soccer Championships to be held July 6th to 9th in Vernon, B.C. Councillor Johnson, can I just ask, there's several U14 teams that are participating in the same tournament from Burnaby. How did they all end up being representatives of the same provincial tournament? One, two, uh, under 14, but one's under 18. 18, yeah, they're different age groups. Different age groups. Oh, are they? Okay. Yes. No, we did look at that. Okay. Yeah, no, they, they were the same age, so I was just mm -hmm. wondering different divisions may be it. All right, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Fortius Foundation, I would move that a grant request be denied. Second. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Big Brothers of Greater Vancouver in school and teen mentoring programs. I would move that a grant in the amount of $3,000 be awarded to Big Brothers of Greater Vancouver to assist in the Burnaby in school and teen mentoring programs in 2017. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, carried. South Burnaby Metro Club U13 Spartans. Under 13. 13 on this one. Yeah, that a grant in the amount of $1,000 be awarded to South Burnaby Metro Club U13 Spartans team for travel expenses for 12 players to participate at the Provincial Soccer Championship to be held July 6th to 9th, 2017 in Vernon, B.C. So moved and seconded. We've had a lot of teams be successful this year. It That's was. good news. It is. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And next, Your Worship, regarding uh, gaming funds and density bonus funds, I would move that Council approve the use of 859400 in gaming funds and 6600 in density bonus funds to fund four capital projects as outlined in the report. Okay. Your Worship, this um, is consistent with the budget that we uh, adopted a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this was just clarifying a question that arose at the budget workshop. All right. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Next, Your Worship, regarding 2017 Engineering Capital Infrastructure Bylaw Funding Request for May, I would move that Council authorize the City Solicitor to bring forward a Capital Reserve Bylaw in the amount of $2,102,355.14, inclusive of GST, and authorize staff 
withdraw from the sanitary sewer fund the amount of 732,710 decimal 28 inclusive of GST to finance engineering capital infrastructure improvement projects as outlined in this report. And your worship, this uh, is uh, capital infrastructure engineering projects uh, that were initiated during the month of May. Thank you. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Moving on to the city manager's report. Item one. <coughs> this is to present resolutions for submission to the 2017 Union of BC Municipalities Convention. <coughs> is there any discussion? Yes. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Willington Heights Park, demolition of city-owned structure at 1448 Gilmore Avenue. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item three. This to seek council approval for the temporary closure of Ingleton, Esmond, Pandora, Triumph, and McDonald for a church parade. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item four. This to request council approval for the renewal of the lease with Volleyball BC for the Harry Jerome Sports Center and authorize staff to execute the lease agreement. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Lease renewal for the Hastings Brentwood Community Police Office. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item six. This is to obtain uh, council approval for an advance of funds to the Heights Merchants Association Business Improvement Area. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item seven. This is to request council authorize staff to bring in a bylaw to appropriate $31,400 inclusive of GST from capital reserves to finance one project. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item 8. This is a mixed-use commercial residential uh, construction on Hastings Street in the area, Hastings area plan. This is authorization to forward to a public hearing on June the 27th. Councillor Calendino, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I think it is good to see this report coming to Council with this development. That particular lot has been vacant for over 10 years since there was a fire at the bowling alley that occupied that location. And this side has been really uh, become an unsightly premises type of issue. And I'm glad to see that finally something is happening there and that uh, together perhaps with the development uh, of the former fire station uh, just east of that, we will, we will have two uh, nice, uh, beautiful commercial residential buildings which will bring vitality to the area, and I'm sure that the Heights merchants will be pleased to, to, to welcome the two new buildings in that area. And then again, if across the street the Legion uh, 248 side gets gets moving, I think we will have three new buildings to add to the three that are under construction to really bring some excitement to the heights, Your Worship. There are a number of empty lots there that have been there a long, long time. I think it will bring new vita vitality to the neighborhood, and uh, I think people are looking forward to it. Yes, so. they are. All right, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item 9. This is lobby amenity and parkade improvements, Metro Town Town Center, and this is authorization to forward to a public hearing on June 27th. Councillor Jordan. I think this is the one. Is this the one? The child care. No. Never mind. <laughs> All right. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item 10. This is two multifamily residential towers and an office mid-rise atop a commercial and townhouse podium in the Lougheed Town Centre plan, and this is authorization to forward to a public hearing on June the 27th. Councillor Calendino. Yeah, Your Worship, thank you. Just uh, a question to staff uh, regarding the 
change of uh, height of the buildings and related to the density and why that change was made. Obviously, a question of aesthetics may be on the part of the developer. But as well, the other question I wish to uh, ask, because this is going to be a uh, development which abuts a residential street, Sullivan Street, with obviously uh, one or two story homes there, and the taller high rise building, one of the taller buildings, will be right against the uh, housing of the residential street, and we generally tend to keep those things away. Uh, the development will also have lower buildings, a 14 story office, which is actually uh, planned to be on the Cameron side of the street, away from the residential and more to the commercial. So we just wonder whether the siting is the best that could be done there and whether the lower buildings wouldn't be more appropriate abutting the uh, uh, one or two story family houses on Sullivan. Mr. Pelche, please. Uh, Your Worship, we've looked. We've looked at the um, siting. This is a mixed-use property at North Road in Cameron, so it has both residential and an office component. We do consider that the office activity, which tends to be a bit more active, has larger floor plates, isn't as fitting as with residential be kept at the corner of North Road in Cameron rather than introduced to the north of the site, um, abutting the single family. We do recognize that we will have, this will be a high rise site with three buildings on it. So any configuration of buildings on the site will have that experience to the residential to the north of being a high rise site in proximity to the neighborhood. Uh, the adjustment to um, the heights that were first anticipated in the plan is to try and reduce the overall effect of that massing of the site of the three towers. So bringing down the 45 story height down to a lower height of 36, and then adjusting the 25-story uh, building to 32. Um, but overall, the relationship with that high-rise or high-density high-rise site to the neighborhood will be the same. Uh, so we don't see any impact from the change to the neighborhood and some benefit in, from a perception perspective that there isn't a 45-story building on the site, that the buildings have a similar range across the property. Councilor Sorry, was, was the, the original plan had a 45 story, not a 36 story? It had the original plan, Your Worship, had uh, two residential buildings. One was set at 45 stories in height, one was set at 25 stories in height. And we pulled down the height of the 45 story building and moved up the height of the shorter building. Um, the, the, short, the building to the, um, that's been increased to the height is closest to North Road. And so it is as far this, as we can get the building away from the residential community. So it's um, less impactful from that point of view from being further east where the other building that was higher was actually in closer proximity to the church, the townhouses, and would still have the same visual effect from the Sullivan neighborhood to the north. So overall, we think we've done a, a benefit to the neighborhood of reducing the overall impact of that change from a low rise site to a high rise site. Um, we can bring some more details to public hearing that explain that change and show the neighborhood what they can expect from, from the overall development. All right. Is there anything else, Councillor Calendino? No, I will just wait to see what uh, we will have at the public hearing. If they accept it, then that's fine. You ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. All right, moving on to item 11. This is uh, a proposed single family residence, and this is authorization to forward to a public hearing on June the 27th. It's been moved and seconded. Councillor Jordan. Thank you, Worship. I know, and the report uh, speaks to the fact that uh, through the Community Development Committee, uh, staff are reviewing. Um, these anomalous large lots and the size of houses um, that can exist on them. And uh, at our December 2016 Council meeting, we asked staff and through our committee to do that. But this particular uh, request was in prior to the, that, so I, it's my feeling that um, this should at least go forward to uh, to public hearing since it was in 
the hopper, so to speak, before council decided that that we should take uh, a second look at the size of uh, homes allowed on these anomalous large lots. Um, and so I'm going to support this recommendation to go uh, to go to public hearing and see where it goes from there. Councillor Calendino. Thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate the words of Council Jordan, but I, I have some difficulty with this A category of some some people coming to want to increase the uh, allowable side, but then they just uh, don't come and ask for a modest increase. They practically double the size of the structures. And in some neighborhoods, they're really out of character with the neighborhood. And it uh, it worries me uh, a bit that uh, we allow such enormous uh, increase in density for the one lot, in, in, in not in this way, the rejected one in the south not long ago. And I'm not too keen in, in approving this one either. Mr. Planner, I'm not going to support this uh, application either. And uh, I said earlier in the discussions we had that, um, you know, the original A designation was to try to pick up those anomalous lots. And generally, if we were ever going to look at the maximum sizes available, uh, it would be on lots that really were estate lots. They were very large lots. And um, the applications that are coming in are in regard to you know, RM3 zonings with an anomalous lot in a, in a community where um, the houses near it are almost, you know, half the size of the house that's being proposed. This is maxing the A designation. In those situations, I said earlier, I would rather see applications coming forward that were a modest extension of the existing square footage and not, an, in essence, the full available amount that could be utilized under the, the bylaw. And, and there are people who suggest, well, if you aren't going to use it, why put it in there? Well, it shouldn't be used in each instance. It shouldn't be an idea that if I get an A designation, I'm going to build the largest uh, building I can on the lot. So I'm not going to support this. I think that we should have more modest use of the A designation and that the proponents of these projects should look at building a, a bigger house, but not one that is going to be so significantly bigger than the rest of the community around them, particularly in areas like the Heights in the in the areas that are built out single family areas. So I'm not going to support it. And with that, um, there's no other speakers. So are you ready for the question? All those in favor and all those opposed? It's defeated. All right, we move on then to item 7.12. And that is the, that's the 4458 Beresford Street. And I think this is the one Councillor Jordan wanted to speak to. And this is authorization to forward to a public hearing. So I do, do I have a mover and a second? Move. Second. Okay, Councillor Jordan. Um, thank you, Worship. I just wanted to note that um, this uh, new building in the metro town area along Burstford, the reason this is coming forward is because the developer's intention is to increase um, the previously allocated child care center, increase it to a capacity that will hold up to 156 um, children. So. So that is uh, a, a very good news item because we were just meeting uh, with the child care providers in the community two weeks ago um, and they said one of the areas where there's a desperate need for additional child care is definitely in the metro town area. So when this uh, comes forward, I <coughs> hope that child care providers might come out and support having 156 child care spaces in that area. I'll be telling them about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I think uh, I think encouraging some support for those types of development would help because I think the developers are going to be encouraged to know that out there there are people who are supporting the idea of childcare being developed within their facilities. So, and this includes infant childcare, which is something that's uh, very difficult to come by. Councillor Calendino. Yeah, no, I just want to echo what Council Jordan said. I made a note when I was reading this, and it pleases me to see that uh, 
the child care facility is going to be increased to 156 children, which will, inc will include infant and toddler, and that's a great need at this time. So I'm glad that uh, the developer has seen that there is a need out there, and uh, hopefully more developers will see that there is need of child care, and they will take it upon themselves to include such projects in their future developments because there's a huge, I mean, we've seen it in the media lately, particularly with the new uh, teacher contract, which uh, forces school districts to vacate child cares from the school sites. The need for child care outside of school sites is much, much uh, greater now than it was before. So I'm pleased to see that developers are beginning to see the, the light and in including child care in their projects. Okay, is there anything else? Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. All right, in regard to item 7.13, item 1, this is 3755 Banff Avenue, and this is uh, a new child care and non-market rental housing. And this is authorization to work with the applicant towards a suitable plan of development. It's been moved and seconded, and we're working with the Burnaby Association for Community Inclusion, I think, here. Councillor Jordan. Oh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'm very happy to support this one. I just wanted to point out a, a small thing is that the little map is is in error where it says Banff Avenue is the little map with the ones and twos and three, four, fives accompanying these reports. It has Banff Avenue down by the cemetery in your neighborhood. And it's in, by the cemetery in my neighborhood, wrong cemetery. <laughs> it's a cemetery, but wrong one. Wrong one, yeah. Okay, they'll make a note of in it. In case people think it's someplace else or moved or new. <laughs> all right, you ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And thanks for all the work you did on that, Councillor Jordan. I know behind the scenes you were working very hard to help them be able to get the funding from the provincial government and to try to make sure their project could be advanced. All right, um, item two. And this is 3909 and 3911 Albert Street, and this is construction of an infill fourplex, and this is working towards a suitable plan of development. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item three. This is 2421 Alpha Avenue, and this is construction of a high-rise residential apartment building with live work units fronting Alaska Street. Ready for the question? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. This is uh, 5258-5334 Low Heat Highway and 2160-2210 Springer Avenue. This is uh, to establish a conceptual master plan for the site and a detailed phase one development plan for high-rise residential apartment building. Um, this is authorization to work work towards a suitable plan of development. Questions called, all those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item five. This is a portion of 7201 11th Avenue, and this is construction of a high-rise tower with a residential podium and low-rise residential building in the courtyard neighborhood within Southgate Master Plan area. This is authorization to continue to work with the applicant towards a suitable plan of development. Questions called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Item six. This is 9888 University Crescent. This is construction of two mid-rise residential buildings and a two-story underground parkade. This is authorization to work towards a set, suitable plan of development. Questions been called. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Motion that the committee rise and report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. A motion to adopt the report of the committee. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And Councillor Johnson, you have the honor of reading the bylaws. One more time. Uh, you were set for consideration and third reading. I would move that one bylaws 13649 be now considered and read a third time. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. For third reading, reconsideration, and final adoption, I would move that bylaw 13703 be now read a third time, reconsidered, finally adopted, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the corporate seal affixed thereto. Been moved and seconded. 
All those in favor, opposed, and carried. And for reconsideration and final adoption, I would move that bylaws 13743, 13757, 13758, 13759, 13760, 13761, 13762, 13763, be now reconsidered, finally adopted, signed by the mayor and clerk, and the corporate seal affixed there too. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. New business. Councillor Balco, please. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I'll be very quick on this. This is uh, this is a little unusual departure from maybe regular new business, but I was made aware last week of uh, one of our citizens, a longtime citizen here in uh, Burnaby, a gentleman named Jim Crescenzo, who uh, is the recipient, one recipient of uh, annually, I didn't even realize this was an award that was given out, but the Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence, 17 of them are given out across the country. And uh, 10 of them were given out here in British Columbia, and one of them is Jim Crescenzo. And the reason I have, uh, I bring it up is because most people within communities that receive prestigious awards like this are not the ones that go about banging the drum and letting people know. I found this out by fluke from a phone call. Someone had heard this at another event and passed it on to me. So I just thought that uh, citizens, uh, and he's a teacher at Templeton High School, which uh, yes, is my old alma mater. And uh, But the interesting thing about uh, Jim Crescenzo is that he also attended Templeton High School, graduated from the high school, went to UBC, got his teaching degree, and lo and behold, he's been a teacher at Templeton since he received his teaching degree. It's a pretty rare feat, but what makes him unique is he brought in a program at Templeton, a drama and a film arts program. And the testimonials to uh, what he has accomplished over the years, uh, North Shore Film Studios, Mammoth Film Studios, and I know, Mr. Mayor, that you uh, boast about uh, Burnaby's, uh, Burnaby's relationship to uh, the film industry. Well, Jim, for 30 years, has produced actors, actresses, and behind-the-scenes technical personnel coming out of that high school. So I just thought that, uh, as I say, it's a departure, but thanks for the opportunity that we should uh, sometimes, as I say, we have an, every community has people like this, and they are not the ones that will go about telling you about the various things and accomplishments they've, they've done. And I think it's just uh, a credit to our community and really a credit to our province and our country I know that Mr. Crescenzo came to this country as a little child, and like some of us around this table, we know that for this country, there are immigrants that contribute a hell of a lot to uh, the progress and the going forward of our country, and Jim is one of those people. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks very much for the opportunity just to recognize one of our citizens and the, the really uh, prominent achievement that he received this year. I know he'll be likely recognized by his own school board and recognized in Vancouver, but would you like me to write him a letter on behalf of council congratulating him as a citizen? Well, that w yeah, I think that, that would be a nice touch, Mr. Mayor. Certainly, I would move that if uh, you're prepared to do that. And to that motion, uh, Councillor Calandino. Um, I know him because of his involvement with uh, youth at risk. And I know that uh, he worked with one of my nephews who had gone astray and redirected him to actually channel his energy to, to helping uh, children at risk. And Mr. Crescenza was uh, uh, one of the main factors along with a policeman in the Vancouver force that got my nephew out of the gutters and, and to rebuild his life. And he's now working in various school districts to help kids at risk move away from a, crime of, a life of crime. So. He, He's, a, he's a, a wonderful gentleman and he's very dedicated to his job and he's not just a teacher but he involves parents and students in the design of his program. So he's just a superb individual. I understand that his uh, teaching methods are very innovative in which he engages parents as volunteers in his classrooms and one of the things that uh, beyond the at-risk kids also his uh, involvement with uh, indigenous mm -hmm. children 
and making sure they get opportunities has been recognized too. So I think he's one of only two who received this award of excellence in British Columbia. And I, that's a, a pretty high standard to, uh, to reach and a real credit. So I think while he's being recognized uh, undoubtedly by his school board in Vancouver, I'm pretty proud that we've got residents like that living in Burnaby too. And I think it's great if we send off a letter uh, advising him that we're proud of him here too. Yes. Right? Thank you. You ready for the question? Thank you. All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Is there any other new business? Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Johnson. Oh, a mistake. Oh, sorry. Um, Your Worship, I just um, noting there's a letter from the purple on the purple pages regarding Airbnb and the study that staff are undertaking. I uh, noticed in the media this morning that uh, in California, Airbnb is expanding into parking. Uh, they're actually having people uh, loaning out parking spots in people's driveways that you can rent overnight and uh, make a little cash. So I wonder if we could look at that as a potential, because if it's in California, it won't be long before it's here. Trucks park, trucks and cars in your driveway. So. Sometimes euphemisms like the sharing economy have more to them than they do. people might say. Exactly, think. Your Worship. All right. All right, with that, are you uh, ready to adjourn? All those in favor, opposed, and carried. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you, staff, and thank you to everyone who was with us tonight.